Ooga booga, ooga booga. Hello, boogies. Welcome back. Ooga booga. We're still here. We're still doing this. Oh, what's that? You noticed something different about my background? What, uh... What's different? Oh, what do you mean that guy there? You talk about little Dylan here? Oh, I got, I got some news for you guys. Here's what happened. You two's hit me up and they said, Dylan, your content is revolutionary. We would love to immortalize you with your very own doll. And I said, hot that, that, mm. I don't want a doll. I want an action figure. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, Dylan, well, the arms don't move, the legs don't move. What, what's action about it? Well, check this out. Backflip. Hmm? Pretty cool action. It also has a great karate chop maneuver. Kacha. 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 Other side, kacha. One more time, kacha. See, versatile, action. Now you might notice that it is a full body movement. However, have you ever karate chopped someone? I've karate chopped many people in my life. You say, so take it from me. When you just chop with your arm, you lose force. It's a to it's torque. We're talking torque, okay? Bring your full body into it, kacha. Full body. It is an action figure and it's styled extremely well, as you would expect from someone who helped design it. Gucci necklace, circle glasses, late night Dylan microphone. You know. Wait till you guys see the packaging as well. Hold on. So it comes in a box, in a box. The second box, huh? But then turn it around. Oh, and Rhino Drugs? Yeah, we got him. And then also, hey, hey, hold on, hold on. The other box, it's a setup. Julius. Headless Julius. Got the couch, we got the lights, the lamps. Yeah, oh. This is so cool, man. I feel like nah, I'm a big deal, you know what I mean? I have my own action figure. Leonardo DiCaprio, do you got an action figure? She probably does. Still, nonetheless, I am very excited about this. This goes on sale March 4th, 3 p.m. Eastern. Little Dylan's gonna hang out in the background. If you wanna win one of your own as well, by the way, YouTube's is doing a little giveaway. You can follow them on your socials for a chance to win one. They are limited edition, so basically once they sell out, they are gonna be gone forever. Will they sell out? I, I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know, I've never sold anything of my own before, so I don't know how much demand there is for it. Maybe you guys are just like, hey, Shut up, Dylan. Shut up, movie boy. <laughs> but I hope you guys buy one if, you got, if you're interested in one March 4th. Again, you can enter to win one. I'll leave the links down below. I think it's really cool. I hope you guys think it's cool as well. All right, so what are we talking about today? I want to talk about two different topics. One, you'll, from the thumbnail, you'll probably be able to guess what the second topic is. First, I want to start, though, with something I saw. As you probably know, on Dylan is in trouble, I dropped the How I Met Your Mother first and last. But as I was searching for a thumbnail, I came across this image, and I was like, perfect, I'm going to use it. But I saw the article. The How I Met Your Mother pilot episode is problematic, to put it lightly. Pilot Barney is straight up scum. Is this a little too, is this a little too blue? Let's get some angry reds out here. So what are the problems this author has with How I Met Your Mother? Okay, I know this is obviously a joke, but I feel like this opening dichotomy of Ted being in emotional turmoil over his friend's engagement shows his selfish streak. If you haven't seen the show, if you haven't seen my video on it, the show starts with, with Marshall and Ted kind of working through his proposal. And Ted starts wondering like, ah, what's, what is our friendship gonna look like once they get engaged, married, and have kids? I'll get married, start a family. Before long, I'm that weird middle-aged bachelor. And the writer thinks that it is very selfish of Ted to ever think about himself. How dare you, Ted? How dare you be a human and have complex emotions, Ted? Now, if there was a character I would bet my money on being problematic with 2020 vision, it would clearly be none other than Barry Stinson. But come on, this is the first thing he utters on the show. Hey, so you know how I've always had a thing for half Asian girls? Well, now I've got a new favorite, Lebanese girls. Is that douchey? Yeah. Is it problematic? No. You know what would be problematic? If Barney was like, Hey, you know how this specific group of people are gross and I don't like them? That's problematic. But honestly, why are any of them friends with Barney? Why is he not the villain? Why is he not the villain? Maybe because this isn't Game of Thrones. Why is Barney not slain in the ninth season and evil ceases to exist on planet Earth? How do they not end the show like that? I can see the writer of this article in 10 years writing an article about Euphoria is kind of problematic. Zendaya, a child star icon, does drugs? Pretty messed up. Guys, did you see Django Unchained? Leonardo DiCaprio, who everyone loves, owns slaves. Problematic much? Then Ted actually goes out with Robin before she can go to Orlando for a week, and he literally says she's not like other girls. Oh, Ted! Cancel him. We have to differentiate when someone just does something like a little bit unsavory versus someone who is problematic. Here we go. Oh, 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 here we go. Alas, the date is thwarted by Robin's co-workers. They refer to a person about to end himself in an ongoing news story as a jumper. 
among other chillingly callous and derogatory language. And they call it, they say he's some crazy guy on the Manhattan Bridge. And that chilled the writer of this article. Ted doesn't kiss Robin in front of her coworkers who have just discussed self-ending, which feels valid. That's not what happened. See, now the writer is projecting. Ted wasn't thinking like, oh, some heavy subject matter just came up. I can't kiss her because the mood's not right. What happened was he wanted to kiss her, but her coworkers pulled up and they were like, hey, we gotta go. And then he was thrown off. It wasn't because like a guy was about to jump off a bridge where he was like, oh no, can we separate reality from fiction? And this is just a fictional scenario. Should we keep going? Uh, what? Uh... This isn't even an article, it's just a slideshow. Ted is pulling the old too much too soon. If this were real life, this whole kerfuffle would be the mother of red flags. Is it problematic to be too much too soon to a person? I guess it is. Or I guess it's problematic. Is she making the point that the show is problematic? for advertising people who want to jump into a relationship to or I don't, I don't know what the writer's trying to say. Mostly because this isn't an article. And that's what I want to say about this. That's, this is the point that I want to make on this topic. We're entering this phase, right? I was cool before. I was nice, blue cool, but now I'm heated. As long as media continues to be a business, aka turning a profit, this is always going to be a strategy, is trying to find problems because people don't really care about new stories about positive things, typically. Like for example, if you saw two articles and you could only read one, the first article was big name celebrity says something racist. And then the second article says big name celebrity makes small act of kindness. Which article are you clicking? You can only click one, you're clicking the, you wanna know about the bad stuff. Cause that's like junk food to our brains. I don't know why. I don't know why we enjoy that. We like seeing the problems of the world. But we also don't like it. It's not good for us, but that's the stuff that we consume. And news corporations, whether it be CNN, Fox News, all the political ones, or it could just be like Buzzfeed or your local news station, they know that conflict sells. So what they do is they go out and they try to find conflicts. And what this article is, is just like lighting a match, setting a fire and being like, hey guys, check out this fire and then walking away. If Ted just pursued Robin normally, we wouldn't have a show. We wouldn't have an interesting thing. He'd be like, hey, you wanna go on a date? She's like, no, I'm not really ready for a date. Then he's just like, okay, cool. There's no conflict, therefore you have no interesting show. All right, I'm done rambling about how I met your mother, but I just saw this article and I was so frustrated because people are just, they're searching for problems simply to make content out of it. And they're framing it as like, it's a serious issue. We gotta focus on, hey, check this out. How I met your mother, such a problem. Oh, actually, I just saw this too. <laughs> on this article, no people thought, OMG. One person thought this is a win. One person LOL'd. One person was heartbroken. One person thought it was cute. Two people, they loved it. 10 people were like, what the F? And 55 people were like, this article's a fail. Topic number two, Sienna May and Jack Wright. If you don't know who Sienna May and Jack Wright are, they were affiliated with the Hype House. In fact, they were supposed to be in the Hype House show. They both have huge platforms. They shot a bunch of contents for the Hype House show, but before it could air, a friend of Jack Wright accused Sienna May of SAing Jack. Kind of like touching him inappropriately and breaking boundaries. Following this, Sienna posted her first defense video and she was adamant, vehemently denying any allegations. A couple days later, proof came to light. It was a video of Sienna kissing Jack and the person who recorded the video said that Jack was unconscious. So Sienna then makes a second video defending herself saying, no, Jack wasn't unconscious. He was actually conscious. You stitch a video of, of Jack passed out from a little bit later in the night. You stitch that together to make it look like he was passed out the whole time. So some time passes. They said they're gonna take care of it offline. So we're not gonna air this publicly. And then finally, Sienna takes some time off and she comes back with, <laughs> well, I mean, let's just watch it. I decided to take a month off of social media due to the negativity surrounding my platform. I found clarity within myself and with who I wanna surround myself with. My purpose in this life is to create. It feels tone deaf to be accused of something and be like, I took a month off and I came back to talk about myself. She then decides uh, she thinks it'd be a good idea to um, to do an interpretive dance to try to <laughs> get her feelings out there. So she dances and people were not very excited about this video. They got a lot of hate because it's like, you're, you're accused of SA and you're like, okay, time to dance. I've thought about my actions and here's how I feel about them. I didn't do it. Yeah. It's like, what, what, are you, what are you doing? I do want to cut her a little bit of slack because she was 17, 18 when all this was happening. I think that's important to note. Like people, when they're, when they're young, they do dumb stuff. Now you still can't do criminal things. However, I'm gonna, if you make a video like this, you're thinking like, 
how am I feeling? And you don't think about other people quite as much. And maybe that'll come, or maybe you'll just continue to be like self-centered growing up, but I want to give people the benefit of the doubt if they are younger. After this, Jack speaks for the first time, basically, and he tells his side of the story where Sienna continually broke his boundaries and they had conversations about it. So this all culminates into the, the final piece of information about this, this saga, I guess. I don't know what to call it to give it the, the proper weight, but Sienna writes a post and it's called Sienna May Gomez Reflections from an 18 year old me. One thing you'll notice in this, I'll link both Jack's video and this article down below if you'd like to, to read the whole thing for yourself. I'll be reading parts of it. Specifically, she talks a lot about the ages. After turning 18, I've been 18 a whole week. So it's in the first couple uh, paragraphs, five days after turning 18, she very much talks about her age a lot. I've never been so scared in my life. Interesting how it's formatted, right? Because it's formatted in a very uh, easy to read and easy to digest way. Sienna seems like a fairly intelligent person. Sometimes she'll paint herself as like, oh, I'm just a kid. I'm just a 17 year old who doesn't really know a whole lot. In fact, she got into a controversy about some of the clothes, uh, a merch line that she released and it didn't go over well. And in her apology for, for the clothes that she released, she said, oh, I'm just 17. Like, oh, I just, I guess I'm growing up and learning. I'm young and I'm still navigating the world and this industry. And obviously I will not always get it right the first time. She comes back to that excuse but I wouldn't say that this response or this article that you wrote is is eloquently worded, but it's there's no spelling errors. There's like breaks and chapters. It's like, so anytime she plays off as like, oh, I just don't know enough because I'm just not smart enough. It comes across as like, no, because I can see you do seem pretty intelligent. The beginning of Jack and Sienna, she talks about basically how her and Jack met in the beginning of, of their rise to fame. They started making TikToks together with like kind of a flirty atmosphere and all the fans were like, ooh, and she's basically alluding to the fact that there was pressure because there's like a lot of fan attention on them. Here we go. Okay, so the hype house. In December 2020, after four incredible months of TikTok fame, more fun than I've ever had, and what seemed like a perfect life, I got a call from the producers of the hype house show asking me to be one of the featured influencers headlining the series. They also told me they didn't plan to have Jack in a lead role. To me, that felt wrong. So I decided to be on the show, but only if Jack was in a lead role too. They agreed. This is superfluous information. This doesn't help the story at all. And I can understand the angle of like, oh, I'm just gonna put everything out there. Just my whole side of the story, even the frivolous details that don't matter. But it also can be a little bit manipulative. It could be read as the Hype House wasn't even gonna have Jack on the show much, but I stood up for him and I made sure that they put him on the show in a lead role. Feels a little bit like saying, I did bad things to him maybe, but also I helped him out a ton. So it kind of balances out, doesn't it? Forgive me, maybe? She goes on to say that the, the producers, again, two 17 year olds. Yeah, so she mentions the age again and says that the, the producers put a little bit of pressure on them to define the relationship. She fell in love with him. She makes that very clear. And it sounds to me like time and time again, he would say, we're just friends, we're nothing more. But she claims that he would kind of give her mixed signals. Now, here's kind of what I assume happened. And this is, this could be false, but I'm just kind of, kind of reading between the lines of everything. She was in love with him. He didn't want a relationship with her. However, he would still have her around uh, because they were friends and any tiny little thing that could potentially be construed as a hint that he wanted something more, she would clasp onto that. And it could be something simple where like he just gifts her something. He's like, hey, we're friends. I'm, I'm giving you this thing. I thought of you and I bought this thing for you. You could do that in a friendship way. She would just misunderstand what those signals that he was giving off were. So now we get into the part where she's talking to Jack. Jack setting the record straight. She first starts, before talking about Jack, she starts talking about the two other guys that she's dated. It sounded like the first breakup was a little bit messy, but again, it's, she's just 14, 15 guys. Forgive her. The point of this paragraph is to say like, I'm on great terms with my exes. So if I'm on great terms with these two exes and Jack has a problem, maybe it's not me. That's kind of the, the purpose of the, the paragraph. That's what she's trying to say. And then came Jack. I was really grateful to know someone already in the social media world and we had so much fun together. But as someone I love and still love, I'm devastated that he made me sound crazy and twisted so many things out of context in his most recent video. To the point of literally painting me into the loud, crazy, overly sexualized stereotype that people try to use on young, especially Latino women. That's a really unfair argument that you are making right now. Jack never really talks about her being Latina in any way. He just talks about her, his experience with her. Now she's saying like, oh, you're painting me into a stereotype? How dare you? If you cross boundaries, it doesn't matter about stereotypes. Like you did something wrong. People are allowed to talk about it. You can't be like, oh, well, if I do something wrong or if I act crazy, you can't call me crazy because that would just paint me into the stereotype. 
So I should get a pass anytime I act in a way that's inappropriate. She goes on to basically refutes a couple of the points that he made in his video. Did I do some things wrong and sloppy as a 16, 17 year old? How old are you, Sienna, again? I keep forgetting. But that said, he did some stupid stuff too. Like chasing after a car full of guys trying to start a fight with them because they catcalled me on the street. <laughs> I might have been a little bit toxic in the relationship, but he was also toxic. Like this one time, he tried to defend my honor. Pretty toxic, guys. <laughs> it's a weird example to be like, hey, he was wrong. Check this situation out. Teenagers do stupid things. Chalk it up to being young and the fact that our brains aren't even fully developed yet. When you use that excuse, like, oh, I'm just so young, typically to have that excuse unlock and to fully understand what you're saying, your brain has to be pretty fully developed. You never see a five-year-old being like, I'm five, I pushed him because I'm just a five. My brain isn't developed. I don't know the consequences of my actions. Typically, if you can understand that your age influences poor decision making, then you're at a point when you get less leeway in saying like, oh, my age has something to do with my bad actions. I don't know a lot of other people at 17, blah, 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 my age again. <laughs> What's my age again? There are some things I would definitely do differently. The first set of her YouTube videos, so she deleted both of the videos defending herself as well as the interpretive dance. I'm not proud of how I responded. I want to apologize to SA survivors who I offended with my ignorance in responding to these false allegations. I have since learned a lot about SA and the psychological trauma response victims of SA may develop as a result of abuse. I learned what Stockholm Syndrome and trauma bonds are and I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to learn so that I can be a better ally to victims of SA. You don't need to be an ally. You just need to not be an abuser. <laughs> That's the problem. And it's weird to say like, I learned so much about what people experience SA, like what that experience is like. But also I didn't do any of that. You didn't really learn anything because if you learned what the experience of SA survivors, what that's like, then you would apologize and you would have reflected on your past actions and been like, okay, I crossed boundaries. That was inappropriate. That's all you had to say. Because as uncomfortable as she made, it's not like she did anything crazy unforgivable. She was just over the top. She broke boundaries repeatedly. It's bad actions. But in my opinion, she didn't do anything like unforgivable. She just needs to acknowledge it so that going forward into the future, and this is something Jack said as well, you need to understand your actions so that going forward, you don't do this to other people. She doesn't understand her own actions yet. Therefore, you can't grow. This is probably the best point that she makes is like, she grew up in a certain kind of environment where like she was very touchy feely. That's, that's how they got their emotions out there. And that's how they apologize and show that they cared. Looking back, I see that I should have met him at his love language versus, a weird way to phrase it, but. And I'm sorry for that because I think it meant we blurred boundaries that should have been stronger. You're basically not apologizing. You're saying, I need to learn to understand other people's love languages better, which is like a, kind of a snaky way of apologizing. But I get the point that she's trying to make. He says, the last thing I would ever want to do is breach someone's boundaries. And for that, I have become explicitly aware of the way I interact with others and will do better. I think she'll be more cautious going into the future because of this, but I still don't think she understands because someone talked to you about their boundaries and you continued to break them. So it's not like, like boundaries had to come to your attention. Like you knew, you just didn't do anything about it. Jack, if you are reading this, I apologize if there were times that I made you feel uncomfortable. I am sorry if anything I ever did. There's no if. Jack came out and was like, I felt really uncomfortable and he was really emotional about it. Clearly he was uncomfortable. What do you mean if? I don't know why she can't just like full on apologize. Do people understand how much meaning apologies have? Like sure, like it's a blow to the ego to, to fully apologize and be like, hey, I messed up and I'm sorry for that. Taking that ownership is a huge key into like earning forgiveness. But saying I apologize if, it's like, uh, this is a conditional apology. If you were uncomfortable, but if you weren't uncomfortable, then I don't apologize. Oh, and she ends that talking to Jack by saying, I'm so sad that this is where we ended up and even more so that I'm now being used in a new and even more hurtful way. So she ends talking to Jack like, how dare you? How dare you feel uncomfortable by my actions and talk to people about it? Through all this, and I will we'll touch on this pa last paragraph here and then the, the big thing that I wanted to touch on on this, this whole case. Jack has handled this in immensely well. Again, they're both only like 17, 18 years old. There is room to, to, to grow and learn for both of them. Even no matter what age you are, you still have room to grow. It's just typically people get set in their ways later on in life. But Jack has handled this incredibly well. He's just given his side of the story and how he's experienced it. He hasn't said like, this is what happened objectively. He's like, this is how I experienced the situation. This is how I'm hurting. And that's it. Like we have room for forgiveness and we want to handle this in an amicable way. And Sienna has talked a lot about herself. I'm losing followers. I need to dance. It's just a whole batch of messiness from Sienna. 
And all she had to do was go, I am so sorry. I didn't know. Actually, it kind of reminds me, it happened with a Twitch streamer, Fed, Fedmeister, Fedmeister, something like that. He lived in a content house with other creators, male and female uh, Twitch streamers. And he would go to their rooms, sit on their beds with them and kind of just make passes at them. And it made them uncomfortable. They talked to him about it and you just keep doing it. And it's a thing where it's like psychologically, people kind of keep pushing the envelope until they get pushed back and have to be like, oh, okay, that behavior's not okay. When I was growing up, I wished every day to become famous. Probably like a lot of kids. It sounds so dumb, but I think I kind of willed myself to where I am now. Okay, first it was amazing. Right now, not so much. Poor me, right? I'm having obsessive thoughts about what it would be like to be back at my old high school. So then she talks about the experience she could potentially be having. Obsessive thoughts. She's not one to like just throw words out there meaninglessly. So she's having a lot of thoughts. And this is escapism. She wants, she doesn't want to deal with this controversy anymore. She just wants to be like, I want to be back in my other life. But instead of like redoing old decisions that harm people, she's just like, I want to be back in a different life where there's less attention on me. So it's about her again and not about the pain she caused. Now I will say that people can cause other people pain and the person who caused the other person pain isn't at fault. The world's messy like that. But this is a case where someone specifically addressed you and said, don't cross this boundary you, and you continue to cross this boundary, then you're in the wrong. And to, to not take ownership of that and talk about how you're growing, you're not because you don't understand what you've done. And as long as you continue focusing on yourself and staying in denial, you'll never grow. She ends by saying, after eight months of feeling muzzled and controlled by lawyers, again, it's a plea for sympathy. Like, oh, these last eight months, people have just been trying to control me. Stop trying to get people to feel sympathy for you. I'm sure I'll experience some backlash, but as a just turned 18 year olds, it's all mine to bear now. Not only did she post this, but actually in the beginning, she talked about five days past turning 18, I had to say okay to a media statement written by my publicists in response to that video. Let's talk about that. That is where I had the most issue. This, that's kind of like the introduction I had into this. I saw an article about like this public response to some essay allegations. I read the article. That's how I kind of got into the whole thing. So this comes from Sienna's rep. Unfortunately, Jack Wright continues his campaign to slander Sienna with further false accusations. His latest falsehoods in the highly edited video. I hate the wording on this. Highly edited video. Jack just sat down on our couch and recorded a video. It wasn't highly edited. Highly edited, if he was, he had like a green screen behind him and he was like in space floating and he was like, ah, something bad happened to me, guy. That's highly edited. I hate how you phrase that. As if a guy could try to like get through a video and bring up all his trauma, if there wouldn't have to be a couple cuts in that video. Guys, he didn't record the video in one take. Therefore, can we really believe anything he's ever gone through? <laughs> I hate that. And Jack is making a calculated action to hinder, hurt, and harm. Not only Sienna's reputation and livelihood, but her as an individual human being as well. Fuck you, Sienna. If you're ever watching this, fire this rep. This person sucks. Other than spreading falsehoods about Sienna online, Jack has taken no action. No police investigation. Just because you don't go to the police about something doesn't mean it didn't happen. Okay? It was always Sienna's desire and intention to handle this privately versus the court of public opinion. That's because she's the abuser. Obviously, you'd want to handle it privately. You wouldn't want this out publicly. Duh. As she would never want to sensationalize or degrade the seriousness of essay. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what it is. This last paragraph. This is the paragraph. This is the, la this is the last part of the whole saga. I caught this and I was like, oh video. Okay, so Jack and his collaborators have attempted to utilize blatant slut-shaping culture to justify their fictitious claims and have effectively victimized a successful woman of color in a way that, regrettably, we have seen many times before. That felt like, to me, it's like a, what do you, those like war horns Vikings used to use and they like blow the horns and then the horde would come and raid. That felt like you were blowing the, the Viking war horn. Guys, they're trying to shame a slut. Woo! Come defend her! Woo! Guys, she's a woman of color. Come defend her! Woo! It's like that, that has nothing to do with the situation at hand. Now, if ethnicity or race or her being a slut, I guess, I don't want to call her that, but I, I guess you're referring to her kind of in, engaging in that activity. It feels like you're just trying to pull groups of, of people to kind of come and defend her. As if it's like, hey guys, she's on your side. She was just out here trying to do some slutty behavior. So defend her maybe? If any of that had anything to do with her and why she's being canceled, then yeah, bring it up. But it has nothing to do with anything. All right, those are the things I wanted to talk about today. That's it. I just I just wanted to sit down and chat with you guys. There's certain psychological tricks that people use, like the media focusing on like only negative things and it just feeds into your mind. I want people to be aware, like stop consuming all negative stuff. This is problematic, that's problematic. Well, let's address the real problematic stuff. It doesn't have to be like a daily cycle where we're constantly finding something new to be angry about. I usually end this video by going, ooh, ooh, but it's like, we covered some serious stuff today. So let's just end it. You know what? 
We'll send it like usual. <gasps> Ooga booga!